I just wanted to talk a little bit about the importance of happiness and the reason that um, Hasidic doctrine uh, requires of us happiness at all times. Um, many people say as a criticism of uh, religion that it is a crutch uh, towards reality and that it um, basically gives you answers to questions you otherwise will never intellectually know for sure and it uh, allows you to see the world in a, um, in a way that you're choosing to, to project your own reality based on beliefs which can never be intellectually um, proven uh, right or wrong because they're based on faith and um, you know th this is oftentimes sees, seen as a as a way to put down the religious lifestyle and religious doctrine in general because it's it basically says that it's your your um, your your you're blocking the truth and the truth is we don't know certain things because none of us were around when the universe was created none of us were around what they call from the seminal big, big bang none of us were around to see what happened how original matter was created none of us were around during these times and based on evidence we have the uh, the world has been in existence much longer than what the Torah tells us and etc cetera, etc cetera. I want to just focus on, on so, so with this concept I, I got into people were, were saying in terms of, of happiness I'd rather know the truth and be upset than be happy and um, fool myself into thinking the same things are a certain way just as a quick um, as a quick counter, just know that Jewish religious doctrine is something that's just been handed down from generation to generation, both verbally in the beginning and also in written format in the later generations, thousands of years ago, um, since the time of giving the Torah, 3,320 years ago. This, this event was something that uh, was experienced by 3 million people approximately. It wasn't a one person, God told me this, God told me that. It was an entire nation of people, the Jews, assembled at Mount, Mount Sinai being told, I am the God who took you out of the land of Egypt. You should have no other gods before me. And, uh, and from there, uh, the prophecy began, the revelation began. So it wasn't something that you could, you couldn't write this down and pass it off as a, as a historically accurate text and have it flow through generations without it actually happening. It'd be virtually impossible. If someone tried to do it today, if someone were to say, three million people were assembled and heard these things, I mean, it would be, you'd be hard-pressed to find such a thing where it ever happened in history. That's how I, I dismiss all these intellectual debates of, of, of the accuracy of the Torah. But just focusing more on happiness, why does Hasidic doctrine and why does Judaism preach the, the, um, the, um, the, the merits of happiness? So, basically, when someone is happy, when someone is, is positively focused and positively energized, their, their intellectual capacity opens up their, their soul opens up, they're more receptive to, to spiritual concepts, to sublime ideas. They're more, um, they're more open in general. They're more into, into, into the feelings of love and share as opposed to restraint and, 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 and um, severity and being kind of closed up and clammed up in their own little world. And this is something that's very important in, in religious life because in, in, according to religious doctrine, you know, the invisible God knows all your thoughts. And when you get upset at one certain aspect of his creation, you're getting upset at him. And, and you can't take him out of that picture. I Meaning, even if something bad happens to you, if you choose to get negative about it and be sad and despondent and depressed, what you're doing is you're having these emotions towards God himself, even if it be one of his manifestations. And this is something which is extremely detrimental to the religious way of life and, and to life in general, forget religious way of life. Someone who's depressed, someone who's despondent, someone who's bitter, someone who's angry, they're not going to be productive, they're not going to be successful, not going to be happy. They're not going to be the kinds of members of society that we want. So when choosing a, um, a mode by which to operate, people have decided, and this is without religious doctrine, without religious text guiding them, that happiness is, is a supreme way of, of being. Happiness is, is, is that way by which we are all unified. When, when you're happy, you can, you can overlook the flaws of your neighbors, you can overlook the, the shortcomings in your life, you can overlook the, your own personal shortcomings, you can overlook all the things which are lacking, and you focus instead on the greater good and on the, and, and the grander picture, which is that you're just simply one out of 6.3 billion people. And when you realize how small you are and how insignificant you really are and how grandiose the picture of God is, and how grandiose creation is, how it's 6.3 billion people and counting, interacting with each other on several levels, several times a day, and how everything has to operate exactly right, and also the rules of nature, how they've been in effect for so, so long, according to the, to the scientists, you'll realize that you have a lot to be happy over. And true happiness comes from a sense of humility. 
true happiness stems from this understanding that based on my merit alone, I would not deserve such a wonderful reality, regardless of what my, real, my reality looks like. And this happiness comes from humility, and humility has to come from a sense of, I don't deserve, and what I get, I'm happy to get. I, I just, I, I want to hear via personal message comments back as to why you would choose another frame of mind to operate if you have the choice. Now, some people claim mental imbalance, some people claim uh, chemical imbalance in the mind, and they, they take drugs and all these things. Okay, I'm saying, given the choice, why not focus on happiness? And, and, and if you're going to argue that it's going to steer you from the truth, it's going to blind you to the tr from the truth, and that the truth is much more bleak, I'm going to tell you that, in my opinion, reality is in perception. And you can choose to focus on any set of facts that you want at any given moment. And you can choose to focus on your own little pathetic, measly existence. Or you can choose to focus on the pathetic existence of foreigners on this side of the world who are impoverished, who, don't have, who are lacking. Or you can choose to focus on the fact that we have enough technology to take care of everyone. And we have the intellect to, to, to work towards peace and to strive towards common goals. You can choose to focus on anything you want that comes into your reality. My argument is, and the Hasidic doctrine, when the Hasidim were first... Uh, came up, you know, as a group, that the name was Der Friedlich, Der Friedlich, the, uh, the happy ones. And this was something that was first was was real bash against them. Like, how could you be so happy all the time? Where is this in the Torah? And to me, this is what opens you up to the Torah and opens you up to religious doctrine and to be a, a, a effective Jew, a happy Jew, a productive Jew, a Jew who's okay with his own personal shortcomings and the fact that his relationship with God is going to be one of struggle, one of trying, one of hits and misses, one of ups and downs, one of lows, valleys and peaks. I mean, it's going to be a, a continual process that's never going to get perfection, even though the goal is perfection at all times. And the only way you're okay with these things is if your mode is generally a happy mode. And, and I'd like to hear um, either comments back or video responses back what, the, the argument to the other side, and I'll address them as they come up, but that's basically my take on it. Uh, may God Almighty bless each and every one of you to be truly happy at all times. Thank you.